Okay, I don't know what the hell is going on tonight. I'm trying to do this live. It wasn't working. Here we go. So, hello. This is Hiroshi Scheib, and I am speaking to you tonight about my thoughts about the, the big news that's been going on in the cryptocurrency space. Normally, I kind of wait like a couple days for some of this news to settle so that we can get like a consistent understanding or snapshot of what's going on but this is this is too much and uh, with the price that dropped um i think it was important to talk about it and there was something about this whole issue um the first top of the story about coinbase that i don't think everyone maybe is not quite noticing or maybe is just my tinfoil paranoid head that's come up with this idea but if you're unaware uh coinbase you know stop trading today uh, mind you this is when people were either some selling but a lot of people were trying to buy bitcoin uh, it did dip a little bit and that has to do again with coinbase being the center of insider trading with the bitcoin cash launch and so you saw some of that money that might have gone into bitcoin go to bitcoin cash now that's all being investigated internally and i'm sure sec is getting involved in other three-letter agencies, and we'll, we'll get back to that in a moment. But again, same week, right on a Friday, right before the holiday, uh, Bitcoin, not Bitcoin, but Coinbase has another problem with their service where they shut down trading. And this caused a panic sell where a lot of people were selling their, their Bitcoin through other services but more importantly as the bitcoin price was dipping people couldn't buy bitcoin bitcoin dropped in some places up to 10k and they were unable to buy through coinbase their bitcoin mind you there are people that may have bought at like the all-time high that may have sold off and made significant losses so it's it's an issue it's a problem it's a, it's a significant market manipulation i have a link in the show notes below where kim Boz, bozak covers this completely and you know um one of the biggest against coinbase was you know the fact that they were supportive of segwit 2x um that they haven't enabled segwit addresses i've talked about this before but it's a soft fork you don't have to upgrade if you don't want to so if you choose to have the one address you're paying those bitcoin fees if you as a service choose to keep the one address, then you're, you know, as a custodial holder, which is Coinbase is doing, you're giving your customers the option of paying high Bitcoin fees. Now, as a business, you know, other businesses, when something becomes cheaper or better, they're going to take advantage of that. And there are other businesses that are doing so at this point in time. There's a plenty of wallet providers, and I would say plenty, but there's a few and more on wrapping that already have SegWit addresses. Um, Green Address, Samurai Wallet, um, Bit Wallet are addresses that have SegWit address as far as mobile goes. Um, not sure about the desktop game, but I will find the Reddit post that lists all the different uh, SegWit enabled places, particularly the exchanges. There's a lot of exchanges that have SegWit addresses that um, eliminate the uh, fee issue for getting in and out of the exchange by going through the SegWit3 address. Now, with the insider trading of Bitcoin Cash, with this recent fiasco, and the fact that Coinbase pricing is what is being listed on the future markets, I anticipate and expect that there will be a full investigation, a government investigation um, on the exchange because they are regulated. And this made me think about what happened earlier this year with the IRS battle, where, the IRS went to Coinbase and they wanted the entire data, basically all their customer service history. And mind you, there's been a lot of people, um, I haven't really used Coinbase in a while. I, I do have a couple Coinbase accounts and I just recently helped somebody get um, a Coinbase or use Coinbase and I'm going to have them get off of Coinbase. Um, I personally, you know, what I have on Coinbase is so small that there's no point in me moving that Bitcoin. Um, but eventually I will do so. Um, you know, I have stated before, we created our own Franken monster. Um, I don't think there was enough development in the exchanges, particularly decentralized exchanges. I know there's now an on-ramp of that now, just simply because of Coinbase cracking and all the exchanges just being, you know, getting hacked, particularly what happened um, 
in Korea, another exchange got hacked and is now shut down and going bankrupt. Uh, the, the market manipulation on these exchanges with the insider trading, um, the margins, the flash crashes, the lack of servers, the service, the back end, just and also basic, basic, basic business went alone not being done by a lot of these cryptocurrency uh, companies, particularly in the exchange market. People are seeking decentralized ways, going back to peer to peer, uh, using Bitcoin ATMs, local Bitcoin. I've seen is rising in usage, and people are seeking alternatives. And they, they need to seek alternatives. We shouldn't have custodial issuers of cryptocurrency. Uh, we shouldn't be using custodial issues or cryptocurrency, no matter how convenient it is, no matter how nice it would be to have, you know, a Visa card or Circle or how ease of usage. Um, this is not really necessary completely about ease of usage. It's about, you know, being your own bank, um, dismantling the current kind of economic system we are in. And we're so early in the game that... There are going to be some sacrifices. Um, I do think you can have a better UI interface when it comes to interacting with Bitcoin and you can make it easier, but I don't think we should so sacrifice it with having these AML KYCs to, to be that compliant when it comes to cryptocurrency. So my dark tinfoil thought was because of the IRS thing, and now the agreement is the users that had 20K or higher purchases that data is going to be turned over to the IRS. That that is the, the ace in the hole for Brian Armstrong and his company. The second thing is that a lot of people in Ken Bosak um, in his um, video, and a lot of them is saying this for years, that Coinbase be, may, might be fractionally reserving. They don't actually have the, the Bitcoin that they state. They also don't have the, the amount of users they state that they have. So if they don't have the amount of users on their service that that would be holding the Bitcoin, um, and mind you, Bitcoin can be fractionally divided into up to eight decimal points, then they don't really have the type of Bitcoin amount that they've been stating to people. And that might have been the reason why they shut down as well, beyond just back the fact that they have this shitty overall business infrastructure for us. Back-end servers, customer service, enough developers on the team to develop this. Mind you, this is a company that has a billion-dollar valuation and is having this many 101 problems it's it's very frustrating and it's affecting the market significantly uh, of course bitcoin will prevail it will bounce back um, the price will get up those who are able to buy on the dip good on them but those who are using coinbase particularly the noobs kind of got screwed here um, with that all in mind my dark thought is that coinbase ace in the hole is saying um <laughs> might be saying to the IRS, we have this data, we'll give it to you, just give us a fine and let us be. I think that is what they're going to do. And it's going to screw the cryptocurrency space a lot. And this is what I think could happen. A lot of people use Coinbase, particularly initially early in the cryptocurrency space, to purchase Bitcoin. I've gotten Bitcoin from Coinbase. Um, I've held Bitcoin in, in, Coin, in Coinbase. Um, but there's a lot of people that got in early and then didn't like the particular, you know, when the compliance started in 2013, got away from Coinbase or they had their bank accounts shut down and haven't used Coinbase in years. And now their data, which is probably retained and held by Coinbase, is going to be handed over to the IRS and they're going to have to have a tax issue or a tax um, problem when they really shouldn't because they may not have done capital gains. They might have just put their coins in a cold wallet or a paper wallet or somewhere else and never you know sold out they held and now they're going to have to give up their the, that public address and identify it in order to prove that they're not um, tax dodging or any other kind of compliance issues and that's why i think that why coinbase is being so brazen is because they have this mass amount of data and they know they can use that as their their card their get out of free jail card with a lot of this manipulation and bullshit that they've been doing, particularly with the Bitcoin Cash thing. Um, which brings me up to another thing about BitPay. BitPay just made an announcement, and I noticed this trend last week, and I was noticing this because I was doing some research as I was trying to help a noob to be well-informed, so I wanted to go to places I haven't used in a while, make sure they still existed, uh, see what their rules are, what the changes are, uh, how their user interface was, uh, what coins they have, you know, the different types of um, places you can obtain 
um, cryptocurrency through, through local Bitcoin or Liberty X, uh, ATMs, all this research, um, you know, Changely, shift, shape shift. And I noticed with Changely, they had a minimum buy order of 100 Bitcoin. And there was a few other places that popped up where it was a minimum buy order of 100 Bitcoin. And one of the services I have used in the past, and I just used recently uh, this year, was eGifter. And eGifter, if you're unfamiliar, is a service where you use your Bitcoin and you purchase gift cards for like Amazon, Subway, or whatever. So you can, I primarily use it for Amazon, uh, you, so you can transact on Amazon. I also use Purse in the past too, but I have my issues with Purse with some of the sellers. I think they sell their products too high in Bitcoin, really. They're thinking still in Fiat and not Satoshi's. That's a whole nother issue, but, um, so yeah, so I was like, wow. And then I got the answer when my e-gift card said the same thing that you would have to basically, if you wanted to use Bitcoin, you had to make a minimum of a hundred dollar purchase to order to use the BitPay invoice. And if you're unfamiliar with BitPay, BitPay is a merchant service where it teams up with merchants to make it easier for them to obtain um, Bitcoin and going straight into fiat. So if someone pays in Bitcoin, BitPay gets the Bitcoin and gives the merchants fiat. Um, so it's a great little service in a sense, but a lot for the customer and paying something in Bitcoin. But the overall ecosystem is not great because they're still trading it out into the into the dirty fiat. And for the most part, it's not an option where the merchants themselves can directly obtain bitcoin and hold it themselves much like um overstock or some other businesses that might just run their own node and wallet um but it was a way a good kind of like beginner step i always thought for bitpay to kind of get familiar with the system and then you can start doing something of your own which many businesses have done but there's a lot of businesses that still use bitpay um one of the companies i use to pay for some of my services um namecheap for web domains uses bitpay well, now I can't use that because domain names are not 100 bucks a pop, and I don't have that many domain names. Uh, web, there's certain website stuff that's not 100 bucks a pop. Uh, <laughs> so it's, um, it's frustrating because BitPay also was a supporter of Segwit 2X and doesn't have Segwit addresses. And they're a supporter of Bitcoin Cash, and they are accepting Bitcoin Cash through BitPay which is fine. It's fine if they do that. It's just they shouldn't be doing that to the detriment of another community. It's very self-serving. And this is the problem I have for some of these Segway 2X supporters is, fine, you don't want to upgrade or anything like that, but and you want to set Bitcoin Cash, but why are you being this evasive or this detrimental to the Bitcoin community that got you to the place that you're at? It seems very strange. And also as a company, if you want to progress further, you kind of have to have those SegWit ad addresses. You should give customers the option of using the SegWit address or the, the one address. You know, it's all about choices and options and not making choices for people. Um, but again, if they, if as a company, I guess you can say, because this is a voluntary system, they can choose not to use SegWit addresses. It just feels very strange that they went up to the, the $100 limit and they're saying it's because of the high transaction fees, which is true, is happening, but it's, they can do like an escrow thing. They could do, there's certain things they could do where it wasn't necessary to have the $100 buy-in for BitPay. And it just seems so scummy and self-serving to me personally. It, do, it just does. Um, I don't know the solution other than activating the SegWit address options for right now because we're not going to get the in-block increase anytime soon. Uh, Lightning Network is very far, far away, but they might find themselves where people are going to stop using BitPay. Um, they're going to stop using companies that use BitPay. They may not switch to Bitcoin Cash or Litecoin. They they want to use their Bitcoin to spend. Um, so it's it's going to be interesting to see how the first three months of 2018 turns out and which companies are going to be here and not be here because I think it's going to be that quick uh, because of the decisions they have made. Speaking of decisions that have been made, um, Belarus, which is known as the last kind of dictatorship in Europe, has passed a bill that will give, that legitimize cryptocurrencies, that will allow ICOs to exist, 
cryptocurrencies to exist and smart contracts and have cryptocurrencies be tax free for the for the first five years. And with internally within the community, we've been always, you know, advocating for companies, you know, companies, but countries to embrace cryptocurrency and use it either as a, you know, um, something other than the dollar, put in their basket of assets and put Bitcoin in there and eventually supplant the dollar. And now you're having one, like I said, the last dictatorship of Europe being the most aggressive, progressive embracing uh, financially um, embracing cryptocurrency and doing so by having this tax-free five-year plan by being forward-thinking and I'm hoping they're going to be holders of cryptocurrency they're going to start accepting taxes and bills and government services and cryptocurrency and retaining that and maybe put it in either a sovereign wealth fund or retaining it as an asset to trade in the marketplaces because one of the biggest dreams that people here in the cryptocurrency base have is having bitcoin being either supplanting the dollar or being traded against oil which is the biggest commodity in the world or you know pairing you where you can get um you know oil from bitcoin or other kind of type of commodities that have like really true true market force disruptor by having bitcoin paired that way uh, so we'll see how what that does for Belarus. Belarus has had problems with banking in the past. They've had sanctions against them. Not all the different types of European countries trade or do business with them. And so this might be a way for them to legitimately circumvent all of that and to still uh, obtain their wealth and, and go about, about their day, if you will. Granted, they have a lot of issues internally within their country, the political structure, but this is a, a step forward, I think, where banning cryptocurrency is not the way to go but embracing and legitimizing it and using it um, and incorporating it within your overall infrastructure will be very extremely beneficial so we talked about bit bit pay we talked about frank and coinbase and we talked about belarus um you know the holidays are upon us um Weekends are typically slow within the cryptocurrency space, but with all that is going on, it'd be interesting to see what other shenanigans happen while people are taking advantage of the holiday. Normally, certain events that happen within like holidays within different countries, they're like minor blips within the cryptocurrency trading. They don't really have that effect because uh, crypto is so global. So even if the West is all celebrating, you know, uh, Christmas or having the holidays in the year holidays, you know, the rest of the world has, is not, it's doing its own thing. And f so it'd be interesting to see what the, you know, when China wakes up, what the, uh, what the countermeasures are and what people will be doing and uh, where the Bit Bitcoin price will be come Christmas day. Cause I, I'm sure a lot of people cashed out simply for the end of the year and Christmas and, taking advantage of the high price hoping really for the 20k but not quite getting there um it looks like we're not going to get 20k by the end of the year but who knows it's a cryptocurrencies um but those are my thoughts uh, those are my ideas um you know keep an eye on coinbase i won't be recommending coinbase i'm removing it from my recommendations i won't be telling people to use coinbase i will acknowledge its existence and what it does and its history in the space but I can't, within good conscience, recommend that company anymore. I personally had been using it for a while. I've had always had issues with it. I understand why people used it, but I have not been that very strongly vocally saying, no, don't use it. But I'm going to have to now. This is too much. This is the last straw, really, honestly. These last two events are the last straw, and it's just, <sighs> we can do better. We're going to be better. That's the whole purpose of cryptocurrencies. You're going to start seeing more decentralized exchanges. You're going to start seeing more development in the, that area. You're going to start seeing people moving to that area. And, you know, Bitcoin has demonstrated over time and time again is capable of navigating all these different types of obstacles. And this is just another one. So that's it for the night. Um, I think I'm going to be posting a couple more videos. But, you know, if not, you know, happy holidays for now. And until next time, to the moon.